Hello, my name is Chris Palmer, and in today's video, we will discuss learning SEO, SEO, if you have questions about SEO, pretty much anything SEO that potentially could be a problem for you. If I can help you, I'd be happy to ask any questions that you'd like to ask in the comment section to over here, maybe over here. It's right here <laughs> on YouTube. Feel free to go ahead and put it in. If not, while we're standing here, let's go ahead and go over a quick video. Uh, this will be the upcoming uh, tool that we'll be using. And uh, we're going to give it away for free. So yeah, we're going to give this away complimentary. Uh, I'm also going to give it to Craig Campbell. Good friend of mine. Great guy should check out his channel so this is a GMB tool uh, I, I've I've been able to successfully run inside of um, Canada all right so it's a Java based tool that you will be able to use and utilize uh, for a particular type of verification method. Now, the complimentary, the free version is going to be for Canada. After which, what I will do is any other variations of tools. All right, this is just for fun. Again, this will be complimentary free. This is what the software will look like. Um, you know, we're, we're going to make some variations of the tool. Um, you know, but I want to get a little bit of feedback, so I'll give an email probably in the comments below after this live chat, after this quick little demo here, um, you know, in the regular comments, what I'll do is, you know, anybody that sees it, I'll put it in. I will need an email. I'm not going to accept any emails that aren't a Gmail, that aren't a Yahoo mail, that aren't any type of actual email if it's pronto mail or any type of fake email i'm just gonna kick them i want to be able to connect with you or if you want send me a message from a actual facebook account like a real facebook account right not just a random one or you bought one or you know uh so, something so i can have some contact uh back and forth so as you can see here these are the types of uh maps that we'll be doing it's literally going to automate a process for you. All right. Um, so pretty much I'm just running through the tool with my good friend here. Um, and we recorded it. All right. So, yeah, uh, what I'll do is I'll leave a description. I have, I'll put it out on one of my G accounts as a download, or maybe I'll put it into my, um, I'm going to launch some of my trainings inside of a platform because doing it inside of drive files is just completely, uh, I think just seems to be a pain. You know, I, I, I have to manually, you know, send them out i have to it's it's all manual i want everything to be combined so maybe maybe to gather emails so i can contact people uh maybe i'll just move it over to the platform but either way i'll leave a link <clears throat> so you guys can have this and gals so you can have the tool it's completely free i'm, I'm gonna give it to you uh it, it this is just beta so if you run into bugs or anything just let me know you know, not simple things, you know, where you can't figure it out or, uh, it, it's the Excel sheet. It's pretty simple. As you can see here, what's going on here is this is, this is automated, this particular part here. So it's going to fill out and, and launch windows and what it's going to do, as you can see here in the, uh, log file here, the objective here is to pick your places, put them in the Excel fill out your sheets, duplicate that 200 times is what I would recommend, maybe 150. Uh, but you're going to change locations, change phone numbers, 
somewhere, something along those lines. All right. I, I want to answer. This is going to be um, a Q and A, but I, I I was I messaged inside of the Facebook group and I had some interest, so I decided, hey, I talked to Craig too. He said, yeah, you know, maybe just give that one away, work out some bugs, work on the tool a little bit more. So that's what we'll do. All right. Um, this particular version supports um, proxies. This particular version is going to be, it's going to, it, it's timed. All right. Uh, what I noticed with maps, you know, verifications, uh, is it doesn't trigger CAPTCHA unless you're going ultra fast. So what I did is I set it to time. It'll fill out all details. As you can see here, that it's just an automated process, right? Um, so as time is progressing here, uh, I want to put in CAPTCHA so we can run it faster. Um, and then two, I want to work with other countries and states. I want to, I'm probably going to, you know, um, you know, for the United States, because, you know, so that's pretty much going to wrap that up. Perfect. All right. So we're on, we're on number two here. All right, so let's let's get into the video. So I just wanted to go ahead and show off what I got here so far. And let's and I was waiting for people to come in. So, if we have any questions at all related to, you know, it could be local, it could be black hat, gray hat, white hat, money hat, whatever you want to talk about, uh search engine optimization, digital marketing, if you want to talk about Instagram. Uh I do a little bit of Facebook um, to run ads, Google ads. I know very well. I mean, if you have any questions, let me know. I'm happy to answer them again, uh, in the actual comments, not in the chat box. I'm going to pop over here. I'm, I'm putting my trainings and whatnot into this platform here. Um, I'm also going to do some GMB. I want to keep everything very, very, very affordable. So it's so it, it can help more people is the goal here. So uh, none of that astronomical amounts to, and then to what I'm thinking too is do some free stuff too, a bunch of free stuff. So like what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to go out and I'm going to look at um, and talk to a few people that I know that have got some courses recently from particular places that were very um, basic informations, definitely in the local space. And what I'll do is I'll make something that's very similar and then I'll just give that away, you know, talking about things along the lines of, you know, signing up for Apple maps, uh, signing up for, uh, you know, <laughs> Bing, right. Webmaster tools, uh, setting up citations, basic, uh, drive stacks, right. Uh, basic concepts. Maybe I'll package that up as a local course and give it away. You know, I, I think I saw pricing somewhere. 250 to 500 we'll just do that one for free but any advanced stuff i'll do cheap i i like the hundred dollar mark 200 dollar mark you know depending on how many videos are involved but anyway i think we have enough people now let's chat what's going on here wow what a glass of water you have <laughs> yeah you know brother you know i was i was i was chubby i was skinny and i was chubby and i was skinny and and i noticed there's a couple things that really helped me. One of them was water and exercise every single morning uh, and high, high doses of caffeine. Uh, so the water is key. Um, will it work with Mac? Yeah. You know, I'm thinking Java uh, should work with Mac. I, I, I'm pretty sure those work. They work together. Um, so I'm thinking you should, shouldn't have any trouble there. Uh, John says, uh, software is for backlinks. No software is for, if you're speaking of the one that I just showed, that's for maps. I mean, if you're not a local guy, it'll, it really probably won't have any use for you, John. Uh, but it's just a simple tool. It does one very specific thing. And what, what that is doing is, uh, putting in for 
we're, we're trying to trigger for phone, phone verification. That's what we're doing here. It's just that process is very tedious. What we're trying to do is automate that process. I'm working out the bugs. I got two really good guys besides myself. I know Python. I'm not very, you know, other than Python, you know, like two years ago, everybody was talking about Python. So I was like, you know what? I started learning it. And so I know Python, <laughs> but as, as I've gotten uh, more advanced with stuff, I really want to lean more towards, uh, you know, you know, like Android development, phone stuff, you know, uh, server side stuff. Like I, I think it's, I mean, Python's cool and web scraping's cool, but, uh, not for what I want. Um, all right. And I did, I, I've, you know, in a past lifetime as being an SEO and doing Instagram and auctioning, uh, I've also been hired multiple times for pen testing. If you're not sure what pen testing is, maybe we could discuss that in an, in another video, but that was my bread and butter for a long time before the lead generation stuff started happening. Um, you know, and then, you know, the SEO stuff and then, <coughs> you know, you know, it, you know, things happen. So in any case though, I'm going to work down the list here. I, I have a client. Perfect. Greg, we're going to start with Gregory here. Uh, he wrote Gregory. That's why I wrote Gregory here, but here's what I'm going to do. Let me, um, pop this screen over. I'm sure you guys don't want to see my ugly mug, huh? Should I just shut me off or what? I don't know. I like to see myself when I look at my videos later on to see if, um, or I show my daughter or my son, even though he has no idea what I'm talking about. Uh, let's let's uh, make this part bigger. We're going to bring this over here. Okay. And then what I'll do is I'll bring myself right here. Let me move myself over. Okay. I'll bring myself over here. Bring this over. Sorry, guys. I'm just fixing the... Uh, and gals, I'm just fixing the um, the browser window here to make it more um, easy. Okay, pop that over like that and bring this down. All right, so Greg says, I have, I ha I've made a client with the new GMB, which is ranking really well, but it has two very old listings that I cannot delete. The dude that made his website is no help at all. Any ideas? Uh, so you have a client and you've created a new GMB and that GMB is ranking well, but he has two old listings that you cannot delete. Is there any issues there? Well, or is there anything I could recommend? Well, what I would look at then is, I mean, I'm guessing those listings are at the same location, right? And if so, uh, are the numbers the same? Because if they are or they aren't, you could always reach out. I mean, it's going to take you some time now, but I would just explain that. Um, I would also explain that maybe those were spam listings. Maybe those aren't your listings. Maybe, uh, I think maybe pulling in some help, uh, you know, Google help may be beneficial in this way. Now, with that being said, if you have two other properties and the one that you've created is ranking and those other ones aren't really doing anything, what's it hurt, you know? Uh, so I wouldn't worry about that. So hopefully that helps you, Greg. Moving down the list here. So I have told Google that they are duplicates, but they don't seem to care. Yeah, they don't care because it's just a duplicate and it doesn't really matter. They're ranking the one that they feel is best. So that fits right in line with my answer. That works out okay. Uh, Leroy, so what do you recommend is the fastest way to boost the DA for a new website? Yeah, DA is a third-party metric. I mean, domain authority, we, we might as well just take away the D and take away the Moz metric and just talk about authority. Authority is built by the amount of pages, the age of the domain, and how many links you have coming in, amongst other factors. But those are the big three. Size of site age of site, links coming into site. Uh, that should really get you on the right path to increasing your DA. But by by no means would I only look at uh, domain authority at, at Moz or anybody's third-party metric for that matter as a determination of, of my page. I would look for increases in traffic. You know, whatever your uh, KPI is, um, which should be traffic, all right, not rankings. We look at traffic and traffic increases and organic conversions. That's what we look at. That's what I track. 
um, then uh, I would be happy. Who cares what the DA is? <laughs> All right, but focus on those three things. You'll be good to go. Moving down the list here. Uh, just, just, uh, dot ink, just, uh, 10 TV says, what a waste of time listening to, uh, too much, listening to you too much mumble, bub I'm not sure what you're talking about. All right. So, uh, moving down the list. Hello from Brazil. Uh, and he says, hello. <laughs> well, hello to you. Uh, when are the courses going to be available? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm literally working on this right now. Um, I was just bouncing around looking at platforms. Uh, I just kind of like this one. So as soon as I'm pretty, uh, by the end of today, I'll definitely be done, you know, uploading stuff and seeing how things work. Uh, but soon, pretty soon. I don't rush. I take my time. You know, I take my time. Uh, because I like things to be a certain particular way. All right. So Matthew says, uh, John says, thank you for answering Chris. Sure. Never a problem. CBD cakes. What's the views about domain squatting in the SEO world? Uh, what's the views about domain squatting in the SEO world? I, I don't see any, it, you know, it depends on who you ask. Uh, I don't, I don't, you know, to each their own. If that's something that, you know, I, I don't see anything wrong with it. Um, but again, you know, I, I, I'm more of the, around the grayer area of things and, uh, you know, it depends on who you ask, but I, I don't see anything wrong with it as long as it's not blatantly illegal, which it's not. So, uh, that's up to you, my friend CBD cakes. Uh, Brendan says, what's up, Chris from Florida. Keep up the great videos. Hey, my main man, Brandon, good to see you. Uh, Gregory says, thanks, Chris. Hey, never a problem, Greg. Little Droid says, uh, hello, buying expired domains from the same provider and do 301, uh, backlinks hurt rankings? Well, all right. So if you're, if you're buying it, I'm assuming that you're going to buy a domain and then want to 301 redirect it, but let's split that into two questions. So the first one is, is. Okay, if you buy domains in 301 redirect it, not every single domain is going to give you a positive boost and they're not going to give the positive boost immediately like you're looking for, or they won't give any boost at all. And it may take longer. All right. than you think it's going to. So that's the first caveat. Now, the next piece is, is now what about just buying 301 redirects from, and I did a test on this, a public test. It's on the channel. I'm not sure when it was, but I went out and I bought. Um, a guy that was boasting, um, Huffington Post, Forbes, uh, New York Times. I mean, huge, huge sites, right? The kind of links you want. So I was like, okay, how much is it? 80 bucks, I think it was or something. I was like, I, maybe it was 110. I, irrelevant, right? It was well worth the money I wanted to see. I made a video. Um, plus, I wanted to see if I could find something that was hot. I made a video about it because it didn't work and I wanted to save you money. If it worked, I would have probably kept it close. So what I'm getting at is sometimes they may not have an effect. Sometimes they do. It just depends. So the best bet, in my opinion, is steer clear of buying a 301 from somebody that's offering particular links unless you really know them. Okay. And you know how it's set up. As far as expired domains, 301ing them in, it can be beneficial, but it's always good to test the site before, you know, 301ing the whole thing. Or what I like to do is I like to cherry pick the best pages that may still be getting traffic or have the most referring domains and then just 301ing those pages. Or take all the crappy page, like relaunch it, 301 the pages to the best pages, then 301 those pages to my internal site right? Internal pages or the homepage, whatever the case is. So there's a few things there, but first I would test it and don't buy anything off of anybody else unless you know them. That's my best advice. Uh, moving down the list here. Do you know anything about a Google penalty? I know a lot about penalties, not so much recently, but, uh, I've ran into some trouble in the past. Um, and how can I recover from one? I've lost a ton of traffic from 40K. Well, uh, Leroy asks this question about 
penalties? This is an excellent question, Leroy. So, you know, with penalties, it's kind of funny. And here's, I'm just going to give some of my opinion and then I'll tell you. Okay, so first and foremost, the first reconsideration generally, in my opinion, is on like an autoresponder. Um, you know, like, I don't know. It, it almost seems like you're going to get nailed. It, it's going to be an automatic no first. But generally, nine times out of ten, pretty uh, we'll say 10 times out of 10 usually google if you're gonna get a manual action they're gonna give you like they send you like link types or they'll they'll give you a, an idea of what's wrong so you can then go in and fix it now generally what i did all right now on personal sites not on client sites but is I would go in and I would take a look. What's the most spammiest, dirtiest links there are? Okay, I would clear those off along with any of the high quality PBNs or niche edits or anything that was powerful that I paid for. I would then maybe redirect those or shut those down, but clear out all the junk and then apply for a reconsideration. Generally, it would go through. Now, after that, I would then point all of that stuff right back where it was to regain my rankings. Again, though, um, I would be careful, look and see what they're after, make sure it's, uh, that, and this is manual actions I'm talking about, not algorithmic. Al algorithmic happen all the time. So just be careful um, and just do what they ask and then put in your reconsideration. The first one's probably going to get denied. The second one will actually be reviewed. That's how it was at least the last time I had to go through that situation. So many wishes to you. Uh... Going down the list here, also, if we cannot find expired domain related to language or niche of our money site, is there going to be a pro big problem to for expired domain? So his question is, is does the if I'm going to buy an expired domain, does it need to be topically relevant? So, you know, I'm running some tests in the background. I just got up my, I want to show you guys this while we're here. Um... I'm going to launch a form that's just dedicated to SEO testing. It's going to be dirt cheap. I have a bunch of tests running. It's on X and Furrow. I, I literally just got done setting this up on the server. Um, but in any case, I got a bunch of tests running in the background. Okay, it's seotesters.com. That's what it's going to be. That's what I've decided for it to be. Uh, but in any case, I, I ran a test just on this not too long ago. I mean, it's I, I, I'm going to keep mine active too. Topical relevance for t passing power is completely irrelevant. All right. Um, now I, 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 I do have something that I want to tell you though, in my opinion to future proof, because it seems like Google is more working towards an algorithmic search engine. I'm sure you've noticed this as well. Um, but <sighs> to future proof your site, right. And I said this not too long ago on, uh, Craig's channel. I think to future-proof your site, it may be best to shoot for topically relevant or go for something that's at least within the niche. I mean, you can get a variation because generally if you're trying to make money, it's either going to be health, wealth, or love, right? Those are your those are your top three. So I'm guessing that you're in that type of industry of some sort, unless you're doing pharmacy or casino. I like the pharmacy niche, but I don't, you know, that's, I'm not sure what you're doing. So if that's the case, you're in the top three or one of the two more dark <laughs> two niches, then you should be able to find something that's at least relatively niche related. It, I mean, even if it's just broadly related, I think for future proofing your site, that might be the best way to go. All right. But for now, if you just want to buy powerful domains and look at referring domains and traffic, then I think you'll be okay. Uh, but that's up to you. Best of luck. Uh, Demetrius says, is CTR boost still effective for map rank increase? Also, can I do it with diabolical bot? No. Uh, see, here's the thing. You know, I like those tools, like, you know, whatever, whatever tool you want to use. Okay. But I think that you might be able to trickle in some, but just sending pure bot traffic is not going to be very effective. I think that if you are running some type of organic, some type of micro workers running a bot, I think you need to push in some organic. If I said organic, what I mean though, is you can add some bot 
you can add micro workers, but there has to be a trickle of real traffic as well. You see, like, I, I don't know what, you know, I don't know if how they're picking it up or whatever the case is, but it seems like when you're running a little bit of both, it seems to do just a little bit better. So, um, is it rank, is it helping rank in the map pack? Yes. I think that that's the number one factor is, uh, searches and clicks right to your listing or searches for your brand business or service and then clicking for your link viewing your posts traffic and click through in my opinion is how you rank in the map pack uh i also think that's the difference between spot number three and spot number one uh in organic rankings um so yeah <laughs> it's working and do i think that you can use bots i do but i i think that you need to also mix in a little bit of organic all right and that could be paid so hopefully that helps you out I uh, lost my highlighted view there. I'm not sure who this gentleman was, though. I want to look at his name here. Okay. Um. All right. Thanks for the info. We really are doing great SEO and backlink quality. Great content. However, our competitors have less quantity and quality, but they outrank us. Is it because they have a hidden PBN? Uh, I mean, so are we talking about maps still? Because you could, they could be beating you. I mean, they could be outranking you because they're getting more clicks and more brand searches. I mean, you're not in their, um, you know, you're not in their Google My Business. You're not looking at what they're looking at. You're not, you know, they could be doing anything. They could be running social. They could be getting people doing a lot of brand searches. I mean, there could be a million reasons. Uh little droid and and just because you're beating them or or doing a lot better as far as quality content or organic i mean quality is very subjective and maps is completely separate than organic rankings so hopefully that helps you out now there are a couple people in here if it you know just so other people can find this uh a, a quick like if you do like it uh, would be super beneficial just so people can find it. That's how the thing works. That's how YouTube works. I mean, I don't know why or what the reasoning is, but if you're finding any value, please a thumbs up. If you, if you dislike my voice, give me a thumbs down. <laughs> uh, Matthew says, which links give the most bang for your buck at the moment? Uh, you know, I, I personally, this, you know, I'm leaning, uh, I really like niche edits. Okay. I guess that's the best bang for the buck. But in my opinion, um, especially moving forward, what I've been doing a lot more is paying. I think that you should buy the highest quality link that you can afford. All right. Now, so that really brings us into what do I think I would pay for a link? I think it deter it a link. If it doesn't have a lot of referring domains and traffic, then I think the value is less. All right. Personally, I try not to spend more than $200 for one link, and that really depends on the client. It depends on a lot of stuff, but I generally don't go over that price, so hopefully that helps you out. Bang for a buck, niche edits, but that's more of a gray hat thing, you know? Um, you know, I, I did a consulting call a day and a half ago, two days ago, um, and it was funny because I did another one a couple days before that, but what I'm getting at is this. Each person that I've talked to in just this one week span, I mean, you're, they skipped over how powerful it is to do a, a backlink analysis on your top, you know, five or six competitors, pull all their links in, start at the top for the most authoritative links and work your way down and build out a list and, and outreach. It's not that hard to gather. You have the email address, you have the contact reach out. If they have a link, you can probably get a link. And then I would just start at the best and work your way down. Obviously, if those, if those people are beating you, they're being favored by Google for a reason. It's either on page, off page, or generally it's a, it's a combination of both. So hopefully that helps you out with your link thing. Uh, link question, Mr. Moss. Uh, hello, uh, Hussan Edine. Always a pleasure to have you on. Uh, Leroy says regarding the Google penalty, it wasn't manual. Uh, it was algorithmic. I did a bunch of stuff to recover. 
server hardening, DDoS prevention, disavow spam, building more quality backlinks with no luck. Regarding the Google penalty, it wasn't manual, it was algorithmic. All right, so let me ask you this. Have you built out any new pages? Because generally what I'll see with algorithmic uh, penalty stuff that I've seen is say you'll have one page, you can, just cannot rank that page, but the rest of the site, other pages are doing phenomenally. So what I would do is generally when I run into an algorithmic penalty on a page, I've tried everything, I, I will just say, you know what, forget about it. The sites that are, or the pages that are working, double down on those and build out more pages. Now, if you start building out more pages and you're not hitting that second page with proper on page, then it may be time to start maybe building out something else. All right. So if you've tried everything and there's just a certain set of pages that just will not rank, I would consider that to be algorithmic. And what I would do is I would start launching new pages. Uh, so hopefully that helps you out. So Gregory asks, uh, any tricks to get real local reviews for rank and rent? I mean, for local, for, I mean, for local reviews, if you want real reviews, I mean, you would have to literally be performing services or whoever you're selling your leads to and then reaching out to those customers as a follow-up and then uh, trying to get them to leave reviews. Um, but I mean, there's no faster, easy way to get a actual person to leave you a real review. Now, with that being said, I'm sure you can acquire some reviews, uh, you know, uh, but I would be very careful. All right, so that's all I'll say about that. Moving down the list, college student says competitor that ranks the first and third three expired domains pointing to their web two. My client is in fourth. Should I do the same as they did or point them to money site? Which would be best? First has three expired domains pointing to their web two. My client is in fourth. Should I do the same as they did or point to money site? Which would be best? I mean, I, you know, if they're, if they're, you, I, I love that tactic. Um, but generally what I'll do is I, I don't see why you're not, why wouldn't you just, <laughs> I hate to give this up, but why wouldn't you just, I'm, I'm sure say you have a client, right? They have a dot com. Go buy that site.net. Go buy that site.org. Go buy that site.biz, right? Then go buy your PBN links. 301 redirect, or not 301, link into those sites and then 301 redirect your other properties that are the same brand name into your entity. All right? And I think that'll uh, help you out. And plus, it looks a lot cleaner because you're trying to protect your brand. All right? big tip there hopefully it helps you uh little droid says to check this keyword you will understand yeah i'm not sure of the keyword uh i i definitely i'm sorry my friend I'm, I'm not very i'm not sure if that's hindi uh i have no idea what that is i, I it looks like hindi uh hey chris darian says hello to you uh grabbed a politics <laughs> yes Yes, you know, I was playing around with one. I got Conyers blog, uh, ConyersBlog.co, right? And what I was using it for was for testing embeds. I wanted to test uh, iframing and how that all worked. Like, I, I really wanted to do some deep diving. So I went and I spent like 150 bucks on a domain, ConyersBlog.us. I just let it expire because I was already done with it. Don't go buy that one. I'll tell you that much because I pummeled it. Uh, but it was powerful. It had crazy links and, and I love that strategy. I have a couple other properties like that. So you did a good buy there. Uh, just be very careful. Like, like don't get their not like you can get their knowledge panel. You can probably take over their wiki and stuff, but I would be super, super careful, Darian, but goodbye. Goodbye. Uh, Zoldiful Nasser says, Hey, Chris, nice to see you. Hope you're doing well. I am. I'm doing very well. Uh, I'm doing pretty well, doing pretty well. I, I want to quit uh, the tobacco. Uh, 
because I was in a car accident, actually in an RV, and I bashed in my face. My nose got messed up, um, but I got my nose fixed, and I have to wear a retainer. So in any case, I hate wearing the retainer because the chew gets stuck in there, but I want to quit the chew so I can fix. I don't have to wear a retainer anymore is, is my goal. And I don't want to spend the money on fixing my teeth and then be chewing and then they get all messed up. Uh, but other than that, I'm doing really good. <laughs> it's just something that's been weighing on my mind. Like, damn, I got to quit chewing. Uh, but yeah, I'm doing good though. Um, Little Droid says, uh, we beat them only on map, but not in Google search. But if you deleted the name of the city, they outrank us on map and search. Just copy and paste it. You will understand it's cleaning company based in, well, then those are two separate queries. You should be building out other pages and start sending traffic other than with your, you must be sending traffic or getting traffic that are searching with the city name. You need to start sending branded traffic and you need to start sending traffic without the, without the city name inside of it. Then you'll start moving up with that, within that other query on map, right? It's all within the traffic. It's all within how you're sending the traffic and how people are searching for you and interacting with your brand. Obviously too, I mean, that's two separate queries, you know, just like with organic, you, you have to look at maps the same way. So hopefully that helps you out, my friend. Um, it's all within that traffic. Go into your Google My Business and take a look. There's like a little meter in there. Just, you gotta get your branded up first before you can start sending keyword traffic. All right? so you're they're beating you only because of uh the traffic coming in from that other search term so hopefully that helps you out matthew says are saplings still being used and if so are they working and how's the best way to use them well i want to say are they being used yes uh is there a safe way to use them or can i i i mean I can't ever recommend you to go and use something like this, okay? Uh, are they being used? Yes. Can they be effective? Definitely. Um, for me to recommend something like that, though, you know, like, or, or tell you a best way to use them, I mean, at the end of the day, you're, <laughs> at the end of the day, I shouldn't do that, you know? Uh, not in, you know, that's not something... <laughs> It's a heck of a question, Matthew. Um, the best way to do it would be tear it out. All right. Uh, so if you want to maybe perhaps buy a domain, an expired domain, get a guest post, maybe you want to set up some type of entity to keep it at least one step away from your money site. And you want to power up that entity to then come into your site, right? But I'm, I'm starting to feel like Google is, they're going that one more jump, that in between, especially when we're looking at exact, exact matches, uh, anchors coming in from the most powerful sites for some, something is telling me that maybe on those types of links, maybe you might want to tear it out one more. All right. And then really send that power in that way. So the best way to utilize them is through tiering. All right. Uh, so hopefully that helps you out. But if you can, there's still cost effective ways that are, are not utilizing that type of tactic, uh, and powerful ways to get links. You know, I mean, I really want, <clears throat> I don't know. I, I think that, I think that you can find just as good of other techniques to utilize. All right. Uh, but it's still very effective. All right. So Chris, nice to hear that you're doing well. My question is, my question is, do you think register my domain with Google will give me an advantage rather than other provider like GoDaddy? Well, the registrars, um, I think I've used Google. I think I've used Google a couple times to registrar. I don't, I'm not sure if it gave me an advantage. Um, I think I just look at them as a registrar. Um, it's just, it, they are very easy to use. Um, I, I'm, I couldn't really pinpoint if they would give you an advantage. It's just a registrar. Uh, but if you can find the domain that you want, would I buy it on Google's 
especially if you're going to go a white hat route maybe or just like a little bit shady <laughs> uh would i buy it through google than more than godaddy yes absolutely i would but i don't know if it's going to give you an advantage maybe initially but i can't i i haven't tested that but that would be a good test that's a good idea thank you for that all righty all right so uh, well, we are getting close. I, I really only want to stay on for a short period of time today. Um, so if there are any more questions, uh, feel free to go ahead and let me know. Hey, Chris, uh, Effort says, what's the best site to buy expired domains? Uh, I like Snap Names. I like GoDaddy. Uh... I've used Namejet. I've used, um, oh, I haven't used it in a while. I can't think of the name of it. I'd have to think about that other one, but those ones will really get you on the right track. Generally though, uh, nine times out of 10, I go to GoDaddy. Uh, but lately I've been using a service to get, I like putting in, I think back orders are a little bit better. Um, you know, expireds are cool, but I, I think getting getting the domain before anybody even has a shot at it is probably a little bit better. You know, because uh, really when you're getting at the end there and that expired or whatever, uh, you're just getting the scraps, you know. Uh, so, yeah. All right. It seems like we don't have any more questions. So that's pretty cool. So if there's no other questions, that's perfectly fine. Um, I, I just didn't, I got my power supply today for my, it's an adapter for Sony. So I'm super excited about that. I have my desk, my normal desk. I probably have to clean all my stuff off of it. But I have the stuff I need to start going having a little bit better video, so I'm pretty excited about that. I didn't realize that you need something else to plug it in, uh, to plug in, like, to set up the stream to run through OBS. Uh, I, I forget what it's called, like a lightning port or something, or I'm not really sure. <laughs> I'm not an AV guy. All righty. All right, Chris, what's the secret recipe to always being energetic like you? I feel down currently because of the pandemic. Sorry, out of the topic. Oh, brother. You know, I, there's a couple things, really. Past experiences and then being in a position that I am today, I wake up very happy, right? Uh, I think that exercise and sleep are, they do leagues for you, bro. Like, sleeping and, and getting enough water, I mean, I know it sounds simple, but it's just so effective. Plus, I drink a lot of caffeine, you know, but I don't know if that's, you know, um, I mean, my life has just been really well. Like it used to be so much, I don't know, in the dark, in not dark, like in doing, you know, just dark as in the kind of stuff that we were doing and it just wasn't for me. It's just my life is doing a lot better now. I wake up with a big smile. I wake up next to my son with my daughter. I have multi, I have a couple properties now. Life is just going very well. I just wake up with a smile and I make sure I get my rest and drink a lot of water. I know it sounds uh, funny. I don't drink alcohol. I, a lot of people question me. I don't do any drugs. Um, I occasionally drink. Like I don't put poison into my body other than caffeine. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just a happy guy, I guess, brother. <laughs> hey, Jeff Rowe Music. Great to have you on. But yeah, I just... I just stay focused. I, I know what I need to do in my life. Um, it's, I, I think it's a legacy play. And I think I just, just staying focused on what you need to do is very, very important. But this COVID, this is, this is nothing. Uh, and plus I have the faith. I, I, I consider myself a person that walks in the light. So I just, I'm just a happy guy, but hopefully that helps you out. Uh, don't feel down, man. This, my dad used to tell me this too shall pass. <laughs> I 
that's that was one I used to hear that in my head all the time. You know what? This too shall pass. So don't worry about it, bro. Uh, just keep moving forward there, uh, Zulfur. Thanks, Chris, to answer us. I really always get inspired after watching you. Excellent. So I love to hear. Uh, you know, I just try to be helpful. <clears throat> um, I mean, I have a couple more minutes if anybody has any questions. I know there's 15 people here, which is amazing. That's really cool. I, I know that it's late on a Friday. I'm sure there could be a million other things better to do than listen to an SEO guy uh, ramble. But I'm, I'm happy to answer questions, and I answer any question. All right, Matthew, great to have you on. If you did like the video, please a thumbs up just so others could find this. There was a couple questions I was able to answer. The questions are a little bit slow. That's okay. Um, I'm just going to pump out one video right now. It's going to be a short video. I found a quick tip within the captions, another caption tip for YouTube. So I'm going to give that one away. Uh, I guess that's it. It's been a pleasure. I loved showing everybody uh, what's going on. Uh uh, my main strength, no, I mean, I guess my main strength, I mean, it's, it's understanding of SEO as a whole and the algorithm and my outlook on how things work. Uh, I, I feel that having a grasp on a lot is very helpful within all industries. I can say this, I'm probably the weakest within e-commerce. I'm probably the strongest within local maps, local GMB. I'd probably say that, uh, right. Coinciding with local, I would say like affiliate, just putting up pages, being able to rank. I did a lot of discount codes and coupon codes, very competitive. I've done a lot of pharmacy stuff, very competitive. Um, you know, as far as like e-commerce and managing and balancing servers and doing all that kind of stuff, you know, maybe I'm, I'm a, probably a lot weaker on that side of stuff. Um, managing inventory, like e-commerce, like I'm weak with e-commerce as far as just straight SEO, uh, local SEO maps, affiliate SEO, like just marketing in general. That's probably, probably my strong suit. So I guess I would be the best at pretty much, not the best, but very knowledgeable and very helpful at everything but e-commerce. Uh, I, but I would say my strongest is probably within local. Just because, you know, most of the people that need help or I've helped or I've worked with have been local and or lead gen um, and marketing based, running PPC campaigns, coming up with creative ways, negative SEOing people, taking down people's servers, trying to get calls within the door. I mean, that's my strong suit. So, but I've ran tons of promo codes, tons and tons of tons and tons of coupon sites, like tons, um, and pharmacy sites, like all kinds of different pharmacy, like all different kinds of stuff. So yeah. That was fun. I never really thought about it. Like, what's my strong suit? Pretty much anything but e-commerce. <laughs> I suck at that. Plus managing all that stuff. Oh my gosh. Way over my head. Uh, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, Jeffro says, any tips for ranking a quiz site? What? I've never had a quiz site. <laughs> but generally, it's always the same though for me. I mean, if I was going to get into the quiz site space, I would go and see who's winning, right? Where's their server located? Where's their traffic coming from? Where are they advertising? Are they advertising? How many pages do they have? How old's their site? I would start knocking down what isn't it. What's all the questions? I would just go down the list of all the questions. You know, like go to your SEO audit template, right? 500, 600 things, a thousand things and start working your way down the list. Just look at it as you in comparison to the number one ranker. What do they have that I don't? And then I would just start putting it in the place. And then as you're building, you'll start learning. So that's my, that would be the best tip for your quiz site. See who's winning and model it. Uh, moving down the list here. I'm glad that you guys gave me some questions. Thank God. Cause I had, I have a little, I had a little bit of time. <laughs> Um, I have, I do have a call though coming up here 
at 7.30. Uh, what's your main strength? Uh, what is the sweet spot for posting on GMB? I, I really liked every other day. Um, uh, but then again, we were using an API tool that was posting every day, um, running events weekly, and then posting every day, running to the event, plus we were running ads. So I would just be consistent with posting, but definitely, definitely every other day would probably be that sweet spot. Uh, Hey Chris, have you made a course for us to buy yet? Uh, I, I, if there's something inside of me, I don't know what it is. I feel it's, I don't know what the word is, but that just, I, I'm never, I will never, ever, ever sell a course, <laughs> you know? Uh, I've, you know, I look at it as a training, you know, I'm, I'm just giving you a piece of, you know, I'm training you on how to do this, this one skill, uh, I don't like the word course. <laughs> That's just me though. Nothing against you, but, uh, but trainings. Yes. I'm working on some training. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking about, cause I, I, I did like some feelers. I always do that. Like I asked the audience, I asked the Facebook group. I asked a couple people that I know and just like, Hey, would you be interested in this? And it seems like a more generalized, like say intermediate level to expert level, not verification, but just GMB, not black hat stuff like verifying and all that stuff. Just like a more intermediate to advanced GMB training. So I'm thinking I might work on that. I'm not thinking I'm going to do that. Um, so yeah, that's what's going to be next. And then I might move into like a local I don't know. I'll, I'll work my way up though. <laughs> I don't know. I don't like the rush and like making the trainings to me. That's why I did like the last little deal was live because I can dedicate a day. But when I have, when I feel like I have to make the videos and then clean them up and you know, it's like, ugh. I mean, I guess it's worth it, but I, I don't want to charge a thousand bucks or 500 bucks or anything. So, uh, yeah, but I have more stuff coming though. Definitely. Uh, Hey, Chris, uh, do you, do I do any paper call affiliate sites? I do lead gens, um, but not really affiliate. Uh, I guess I am an affiliate, but I've been working with pretty much like timeshares, travel clubs, uh, vacation ownership. I do, um, something that's called like dinner parties. I call them dinner parties. And what it is, is like, say, we'll say an ins a mortgage broker or maybe a life insurance policy person wants to put on like a lunch and a dinner or a breakfast. And then what you do is you offer somebody a complimentary meal to come in for a 90 minute presentation where they'll learn about, you know, whatever the case is. Right. Uh, and then they get a complimentary meal. I do those. And then each person that shows up, I get something that's called a show. I, I get a fee say a hundred dollars, generally a hundred, two hundred dollars, depending on the close and a close is what's the final value. What if they close them on a deal, what do they get? Like if it's a $10,000 close, then generally I'll get 200 bucks, something like that. Uh, per person that shows up though, a show. So, uh, so yeah, I, I mean, that's the only thing I've done. Kevin, really, I stick in my lane. That's been my main deal. And then I go off and I venture stuff to, to play. So what I like to do is say like, I'm profitable. I'll take a little bit of capital and then I'll go and try something. So it started with like, say the coupon sites. And then I was like, Oh, you know, I was able to start doing it with the G sites. You know how things are. So, but yes, but no, Kevin <laughs> is the answer. Uh, educational says I'm from Pakistan. I have subscribed to your channel when I had a thousand subs. Can you tell how can I build backlinks for my educational website for free? Well, see, you're in a very good position in a way. If you have a .edu site, if you can go and acquire .edu's and .gov links, irrelevant of where they come from, I think you'll be at a very high advantage. Um, as far as building for free, I mean... <clears throat> I'm, I'm not sure how hard it would be for you um, as an educational purpose to put out educational 
People always want to help people that are teaching. I think if you did some outreach, it wouldn't be that hard for you to get some links or at least maybe write on some logs. I think if you did some outreach and some link begging, I think that you'll get some links. <laughs> uh, link begging works. I know it sounds horrible, but it's very effective. All right. Uh, do coupons work as a call to action? Yeah. Uh, you know, I like coupon codes, um, discount codes. Use this with timers and countdowns and, and, and then they disappear. And then they're tracked by IP. So when they come back, they're actually not there. Uh, yeah, I think they are effective. Um, but it really depends on your niche and then like how saturated is that particular tactic within your niche. But yes, I found, I found those to be very helpful. Absolutely. Matthew says, do you think that running PPC gives any boost or is it the traffic it generates makes it worth running them to give a boost? Well, I think that the PPC, I, I think that it, I think that it, it plays a huge part. Like, let's just say, okay, I start running. If I'm just, if I'm centralizing on say CTR, all right, I, I just want to get generate clicks and traffic. Say I'm running it to a post or I'm running it to a landing page with a huge, there's only one thing to do on the page is to click a button. It goes to a GMB or wh whatever the case is. I think that along with that, Plus the, ch because you're running ads, people are looking for your brand. People are searching. People are going to a site. People are looking up your name. I think if you're running enough money, right? Running enough traffic, then I think that effect of clicking, going to the site, going to the GMB, looking up your name, like just normal stuff that people do when they see an ad, they'll look up the name, review, scam report, right? All that stuff. I think after the course of time, plus with a trickle of maybe some bot traffic or maybe a trickle of micro workers. I think that that's very effective with CTR. Uh, so do I think that just the PPC will give a boost? Maybe slightly, but I, I wouldn't look at it like that. I like to mask my uh, more gray hat tactics with PPC. All right. So hopefully that helps you out when we're talking about CTR. All right. Uh, moving down the list here. Uh, new GSR, excuse me one moment. All right, new GSR. How, how do you do a proper GMB audit on your competition? What are some top tips around this? Well, as far as a GMB, what, what I'm looking for is completeness of profile. I'm also looking at, even within the GMB, I'm, then I'm looking at citations. Then I'm looking at, <laughs> I would start with those two top things right there as far as tips. I'd be looking at completeness of account, especially if they're ranking above me. And then I would start looking at citations, citations that are built. Then I would be looking at corresponding keywords that are within that profile on their website. Uh, that would be three tips for you that would be helpful. All right, so hopefully that helps you. Uh, hello, Chris. With due respect, as Google may update deranked many websites now, my question is how to rank those websites back. And yes, there is an upcoming Google update which will again decide ranking. Well, <laughs> we can always say that there's going to be another update. We can always say that Google is going to do a reanalysis of the SERP. All right. So with that out of the way, if you have been doing anything that you know you shouldn't have been, right? And I know this may sound generic, but the fact of the matter is if you're doing clean SEO and we know what that is on page, off page technical off page being literally getting quality blogs or quality sites, quality links to link back, right? Doing your on page properly, not building out tons of spam web twos or whatever the case is. If you're, if you're running a clean campaign, 
all of the accounts that I've had access to, again, I only have nine clients, nine people that I work with very consistently along aside from lead generation and any affiliate things that I do. All of those people were <clears throat> not following guidelines of a proper SEO campaign, in my opinion, were building high velocity, low quality. So if you just stick to the script and you know what that is, follow the guidelines of proper SEO, I think you can run into a lot less troubles and headaches later on and you wouldn't have been deranked because all of the entities and properties that have been following, I call it like the script, the, uh, you know, like an SEO guideline, the, I didn't see any fluctuation or any trouble at all. So, you know, that probably would be the best that I can tell you as far as now. All right. So, um, best of luck to you too. <laughs> Uh, news R says, thank you. Thank you to you and, uh, help you now. I hope, hopefully that helps you out. College student says how to rank a GMB in a nearby city besides adding service areas and zip codes to the GMB with traffic coming and looking and associating your brand with those other locations just like an auto suggest would work over the course of time, you would tend to find out if you were doing some searches, you would, you would see that after running maybe a campaign, we'll say a micro workers campaign of a huge, significant amount of clicks and traffic going and looking for your brand keyword with a city modifier over the course of a month, in very large doses, you would notice that from that point forward on, it seems as though that I've been getting and seeing more organic traffic coming from those other locations that I was trying to pump up the numbers on, if that makes sense. So if you want to rank without doing those things that you mentioned, which are very good tactics, I would start looking at clicks and traffic associated with brand and keyword with city modifiers on them. Now, however you want to do that is up to you, but that would be my best advice. All right. That was more than I usually share, but I'm glad I can share that with you. Uh, and well elaborated. Yes. <laughs> I'm glad I could help you. And yes, Chris, if we get backlink from a Google news approved site, Will it give benefits to our website ranking and quick indexing from that backlink, which you got from Google News approved site? Well, I've bought in Google approved sites. You know, I didn't really, I'll say this. When we bought those approved sites and then we're publishing stuff, I did notice that those sites were getting a lot of traffic. Um... I, if I was going to go out and buy those types of sites, I'd be looking at it more of a traffic play than a backlink gaining play. All right. And that's just my opinion. So hopefully that helps you. Uh, Matthew says, do local links give a bigger boost than an equivalent non-local link for your GMB ranking? And if so, how much better are they? If so, should we always get links from local councils and business hubs? Okay, so this is a great question. Matthew, you're coming with some excellent questions. These are good. These are helpful questions. These are the kind that I want to chop all the stuff out, you know, and add these in. Great question. So <clears throat> I'll start up at the bottom and work my way up. So first and foremost, in a local space, which is also, which is going to be you know, city or state hyper-specific, also generally very niche-specific, okay? I would always start with my competition that's in the position that I want to be for each of the queries, pulling in their links, right? Because Google's obviously showing favor to those links and to those pages. So I would build those out. Now, to touch on the bottom part, as far as getting counsel and, say, Better Business Bureau and links of those nature, right of that nature and that are niche related right directory related 
uh, niche specific. Do I think that they're super beneficial? Yes, but I think that it's part of a local backlink profile along with citation building for an overall good ranking. So to sum it up is don't only focus on, you know, say those business directories that are niche specific, but also build those high authoritative niche related local related links that your competitors have along with all of those other directories. You need a mix of both. And, and, and as, and as a final, final caveat, don't ever just do one thing, right? Because what's working today will not be working tomorrow. Always combine things and take your time. Do not be in a rush. I hear guys going out with, as far as building links is concerned, right? If you build a hundred links, depending on your niche, if you're building a hundred links a week, that's a lot, right? I mean, generally maybe one or two links a week is where you need to be to see some success if they're quality links, you know? Uh, now it's when I think, you know, SEOs are getting confused, maybe newer SEOs is when we're talking about these extravagant numbers, it's generally when we're tearing out or we're trying to power up other entities that are away from our site and we don't own. So that was a lot, but hopefully that helps you out um, amongst everyone else or anyone else. Also, if, if you're here, I, I, this number is, I know, not right, but if you're liking any of the information, if it's helpful so other people can find the video, please, a thumbs up is only helpful for the algorithm in my opinion uh but if you genuinely like the content please a thumbs up is very helpful for for other people to find the video thank you uh moving down the list here uh college says thank you chris many blessings yes many blessings to you my friend um chat birdie says hello chris any tip on indexing fast for example I post my URL on social media and then use proxies to click them. Is it safe? I that is a very <laughs> that's old. Um yeah, I haven't heard anybody talk about that in a while. Um I mean, I've been doing something recently uh that some people may know about or you know, I've been holding it back. Uh, but I'm probably going to make another video on it, but it involves using maybe like Search Console. All right. Uh, maybe using GMB Business, right? Using Google Properties. Also, I'll give you a quick indexing tip because I'm about to make another indexing video. Take a look at Google Photos. Take a look at Google Photos. I mean, I'm not talking about mass amounts of links, but if you're looking for just maybe one or two that are being very troublesome, but you want to get them indexed and crawled, take a look at Google Photos, right? It's not a lot, it's not for mass, but I think that, um, I think that you'll see that you'll like that, you know, throw it in there, put it in there, share it within your group or whatever. Uh, maybe even throw it into your Gmail, right? Yes. Uh, and then do a quick search, do a site colon search for that URL and you'll notice that it's, uh, indexed. So hopefully that helps you out, brother. Uh, does posting on Twitter index pages quickly? Uh, the, it, the Twitter pages index instantly. Um, I think that it, it does help say you're, you're doing something maybe a little bit spammier and there's a link that generally would take some time to get crawled or maybe not get crawled at all. I feel that maybe as of now, it does seem that Twitter is being a little bit helpful with uh, getting stuff crawled. Yes. So, uh, I don't know about quickly, uh, but I think it helps it get crawled. I don't know about indexed. All right. So hopefully that helps you out, Kevin. All right. Um, well, I, I definitely at seven 30, I have a call. Um, I promised, I promised a gentleman that I would give him a call. Um, so I don't want to, I don't want to do that. I want to make sure I give this guy a call. 
Um, I just have so many projects going on. It's like you're juggling, you know? So, in any case, I think that that's going to wrap up today's video. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, any quick questions before I jump off? Do you think there is any soccer that is getting on page bang at the moment? I'm not sure what you mean by on page bang. Uh, as far as on page tools, I use surfer. Um, I use surfer. Um, I mean, I, I've, I've used Kyle's tool. I, I like it. Uh, but I switched to surfer because it's just, in my opinion, leagues above I, but I like Kyle's tool and I like surfer as far as for on page tools all right uh hey Chris what do you think about Google websites I made a 2.0 site today hi DAPA yeah I, I like Google sites I think don't be blinded by the hi DAPA uh unless you're going to be building links to it all right so yeah I don't think, I think that the metric is thrown off a little bit. I don't think that all that power is actually there. I think you're, maybe it's crossing over, but the link coming from that site isn't as powerful as getting, you know, a link from a PBN that's say a, a DA50, right? Which you would think it would be, but it's just not. Uh, but with that being said, I think that the Google sites are excellent for buffering links. So hopefully that helps you out. Um, how to find long tail keywords. Well, what I like to do um, as far as finding new keywords, finding long tail keywords, maybe to add to content or write new content about is depending generally when I'm even when I'm inside of say like doing coupon sites and stuff like more affiliate stuff, what I'll do is I'll go to some of the top competitors and I'll just throw them in the SEMrush which for some reason my buddy changed his password. Uh, and uh, what I'll do is I'll pull and I'll look for long tail variations that have very low competition, but they're getting a trickle of traffic, say 200 searches a month. Um, and then I'll either add those words to content or I'll build out pages that encompass all of that, all of those keyword phrases and, and variations of the phrase. Um, and then when, when I'm doing long tail, uh, strategy, I'm going to make a video on this. I have it on my whiteboard. Um, using the variations is so powerful. I found like what I mean by this is say that you have a long tail phrase. It's four words. You don't have to use those four words in a row. Like, you know, <laughs> you could use these two words multiple times and these two words multiple times spread out on the page. And it is so beneficial. Um, so yeah, that's generally what I do though. If I'm looking for long tail variations, I'll pull the top competitors, see where they're getting traffic for words that aren't actually on pages. And then I'll go build out pages or add it to my content. So yeah, that's one way. Another way is you could pull what Google already sees your site as. So obviously you're getting traffic from keywords that you haven't written about or aren't on your page, but Google feels that your site's about that, right? So you could go to like, say, Search Console, uh, Google Keyword Planner, put in your website, and then it'll give you a list of what it thinks your site's about. And then just do do a quick analysis, you know. Just take a look. I mean, have I written about this? Is this on any of my pages? And then if it's not, add it or make a page dedicated to it. So that's a couple tips for you. Hopefully it helps you out there, uh, Mr. Raza. Chris, last question. Should we allow tag and categories to be rank in WordPress? If so, if yes, why? If no, why? Because Google's not taking the exact descriptions of my posts. Um, all right. So I like categories as top level pages. Uh, tag pages, I would probably... Uh, I would even probably no index follow them, uh, depending on the strategy that you're using. I mean, it really depends on your situation. 
So that's probably the go-to. I think I made a video on this. I would always generally, as a general tip, no index follow. Uh, depending on the situation, I do use category pages. Um, but I look at top of a silo to be a category page, in my opinion. You know, so uh, that's going to be the general consensus. No index follow. All right. Uh, I like to post a no experience required job available on social media pages with my GMB share link. It gets me a lot of clicks and calls and seems to give me a good boost. Yes. That's absolutely correct, Craig. Or Greg, you're right. Yes. Internships, job queries. I know very, yeah, I know some pop. Yes, <laughs> I agree with you. I think that's a great tactic, sir. Uh, Hayden Koch, for a new domain, is it safe to do, I got I to gotta rock and roll here in a few minutes. Um, for a new domain, is it safe to do the edu gov link straight to money site or should it be sent to a s3g site to start yeah tear tear that kind of stuff out anything that you wouldn't want to show to google uh i forget who i heard it from but plausible deniability right there should be a reason for every single link and when you're doing big link campaigns and you're trying to add up value and what i mean by add up value is using junky domains to make one big powerful domain, make sure it's tiered out. So set up a good tier one branded or product name web two, right? As like say WordPress or Tumblr, whatever you want to use, and then start building out those profiles, edus, .govs, redirects, whatever you want to do, niche edits. And that way you have less amounts of links coming in, but the links that are coming in have the exact match and they're very high quality, quality being potent as far as link power. So hopefully that helps you out. But yeah, tear those out, my friend. Does GSA backlinks work for negative SEO? Ah, one moment. So I've always done I don't want to say always, but the type of negative SEO that I have implemented in the past, right, had nothing to do with links. Now, with that being said, recently that uh, Craig, who I have been talking to, great, I consider him to be a friend now. He had a gentleman on not too long ago. I forget his first name, or I think his name is Bradley, to be honest with you. I'm not 100% sure. I forget his name. I don't want to say one thing. But anyway, he how he was describing it is another way that the PBN provider that I work with, he runs link sites, right? How he was knocking out his competitor was using this same type of tactic. So long story short is I am running a test using positive to negative links. Right. That's all I'm going to say, because I don't like to talk about negative SEO too much unless it's a helpful thing. But setting up a positive to receive a positive signal and then changing that signal to a negative, whether it's through anchor text and traffic. Um, I'm going to know a little bit more about that. So do I think it can be beneficial? Yes. But you need to have access to those links um, to be able to change anchor text type once you know that they've been counted and you need to be able to track them. So with GSA, it may be hard to do such a thing. Okay. Uh, but I think it could be done. Hopefully that helps you. Thanks. Have a nice time. Uh, I hope I will. Hey, Chris, may I ask you about pagination? Do I need to no index it? Uh, pagination pages. Yes, I would no index. Uh, thanks, Chris. Uh, appreciate all of your great work. Great to hear you. Uh, I'm great to be here to help you. Um, so I think that's going to be it for today. Uh, my name is Chris Palmer. I'm going to hop off now. I have to make a phone call. Uh, if there's any other questions, though, please leave them in the comments below. I, I answer all questions. As long as it doesn't have a link in it, as long as it's not negative, as long as there's no profanity, 
any of those types of things get pushed out anyway. Um, I have a whole list, 5,000 words of anything that's derogatory gets kicked right out. Um, so I know links too, but other than that, I'll answer any question that's SEO digital marketing related. It's been a pleasure. I'm glad I was able to hop on and answer some questions today. Everybody that was here and gave me a thumbs up and didn't give me a thumbs up. Anybody that asked a question. Thank you. Everybody have a blessed day. It's been a pleasure. Have a wonderful day, everybody. See you next time. No problem, Jay. See you, DJ. See you, Jay. See you, help you know.